Now, any of you know, moms have a way of just continually giving, don't they? Moms just give. It's what they do. They give, and they give, and they give. They're selfless about their giving. I saw that in the life of my mom. I see that in the life of my wife. I see that in every godly woman. They just, something in them inherit that wants to give. But before that can happen, we need to learn how to receive fully. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void, empty to me, but it shall accomplish what I purpose, what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Words are words you've heard me say time and time and time again. Words that we speak are seeds that are planted. So significant. So powerful. Moms are seed carriers. Both in the natural and spiritual. Proverbs 18.21 says this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. I remember growing up as a young man. Man, you know what I'm talking about at times. I was raised by a farmer. He's driven. And sometimes he'd come into the house a little upset. You know, perhaps a little hot-headed. No one can relate to that. My wife sure can't. I was never hot-headed. Was that, honey? <laughs> but mom always had a way to bring peace to the situation. Mom always had a way to bring balance to the situation. My wife always had a way, after I'd come in like barn buster, I'd leave and she'd talk to the boys. Now, guys, father really didn't mean all that. You know what I'm saying. I don't need to go on with that. Godly moms are very careful about the words they speak. In the life of Mary, the Virgin Mary, who carried with her, even when the angel of the Lord appeared to her, she questioned it first, but then she said, at your word, O Lord. And then it goes on to say in Luke 2.19, that she kept all these things, and pondered them in her heart. Moms have a beautiful way of doing that. Guys, me, I'll say, I'll use just, I'll take the blade, I'll take the hit this morning. Maybe not so much. I tend to, what's in me just tends to move out. I'm getting better at it, aren't I, honey? <laughs> what? See, In learning to receive, the question this morning I, I posed to you is this. How do we seek him when he says in Hebrews 13, 5, is it? Yeah, 13, 5. I will never leave you or forsake you. How do we seek him? It starts with this. We allow God to touch us. We allow him. Everything that happens always takes God's initiative first. Yeah? You with me? Learning to receive. John, 1 John 14, 9, 419 says this. We love God because he first loved us. So it takes God to love God. Do you hear my heart? It takes God to love God. We are the responders. Nothing originates in us. Nothing. The Father is responding to the Jesus that's in you. And we happen to be a part of that relationship. It's a guarantee that is always going to connect us. And we can connect with him always. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation. Because if you are in Christ, so are your circumstances. 
Hear what I just said. If you are in Christ, so are your circumstances, so are your situations. Romans 8.35 says, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. So that means what? Your circumstances are in him too. And then it's, it's his power that is going to change those circumstances. You can't run from that. Acts 1.8, you've heard me quote it all the time. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Look at it this way. Having Christ in you is awesome because all of heaven is attracted to you because of the Jesus that's in you. Because when you receive the, the seed and said, here I am, Lord, I need you, come into my heart. All heaven is drawn to you. And that's what I want to encourage you ladies with. Sometimes you give, and you give, and you give, and you give. This is a day to learn about receiving. And everything comes from our Heavenly Father who initiated it all. It's a true per magnetic personality. You attract blessing because heaven is drawn to the Jesus into you. You attract favor because Christ is in you. You have a placement in Christ. He puts you there. After all, where are we seated? Where are we seated? Aren't we seated with Christ in heavenly places? Whether, whether you want to or whether you feel like it does not matter. If you are in Christ, you are there. You are there. Whether you feel like you're experiencing him right now, it does not change the truth that he's in you. And everything in heaven is drawn to that truth. See, too much of the church, too many of us live by the feeling, well, I don't feel it. Well, Smith Wigglesworth, my hero, says, I am not moved by what I see, but I feel or what I touch, but only that which I know to be truth from the word of God. And the word of God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because that's what salvation gives us. It's not like the old covenant that was a visitational See, in the old covenant, God would come upon a person, and then he would leave. It's not that way in the new covenant. In the new covenant, it's habitational by the Spirit of God. Isn't that awesome? Grab that truth. Some of us still live, unfortunately, by visitation, because we're ruled by how we feel at the time. Well, I don't feel, some days we don't even feel saved. We feel so unsanctified, all right? I mean, be honest. Been there, done that. But we need to see that we are a new creation. We are a race of people until Jesus came that never existed before. You hear me in that? A new creation. Before Jesus, it was all visitational. Now he has come and made his home in us. We are habita habitation of God by his spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, he's living in my house. You can't run from it. You can't hide it. He's a member of the family and he's not going to leave. He has no intention of leaving. Your dwelling place of God by the Spirit. The great news is you don't have to do anything to get it because you're already in it. Religion tells us that we have to do something, we have to give, you got to, it works, works, no. It's a gift by grace to receive. And if you don't get that this morning, you will be striving. Because as you put out, as you put out, as you give as a mom, if you don't give something back, you don't get to receive something, you will burn out. Ah, how can I do this anymore? These kids don't appreciate me. Maybe you have children yet that are not in the kingdom. You know what I speak of. You continually pour out. You continually pour out. You continually pour out. I don't like to sound cliche, but you need to be under the spout where the glory comes out to receive. And that's a place of habitation, not visitation. And that's the state of place I want you to see yourself this morning. We got a new doggy, Sammy. I got him one day when the girls were out looking at wedding dresses. Cinnamon and our old boy died. We had to put him down. And I love Brianna's little shorty, Chai. Chai guy. So I went to Lancaster Puppies and I saw him and I bought him one afternoon when they were out. And I called Marge. I said, Marge, I bought a dog. She said, what? 
Now, Sammy, I don't know his background, but Sammy, sometimes I can't figure him. He'll come to me, and other times he'll run when I walk towards him to try to pick him up. The picture I'm trying to paint with this is that, like, like, like little Sammy, we need to learn to sit, stay. <laughs> when things get tough, sit, stay in my presence. Don't run off. Be still. Have the peace and the assurance. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Sammy, I love you. <laughs> Sammy, sit, stay. Right, Penelope? All you have to do is abide in it. Learn how to dwell. God is not expecting you to love him from your own initiative. Think about that. He's expecting you to receive his love and give it back. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Listen, whatever God wants from you, he's first going to give to you. It's all about receiving first. You, is this making sense? All the commandments in the New Testament are dis different from the old ones. Let's talk about holiness. In the Old, in the old Testament, the Old Covenant, you get this picture I did. Be holy as I am holy. How did that work? In the New Covenant, he said, son, daughter, I have a gift for you. It's called holiness. Whew. Receive it. Take it. It's a gift. You can't deserve it. You didn't earn it, but it's a gift that I have to you. Righteousness is the same way. We are, there is no righteousness in and of ourselves. Righteousness is a gift. Margie, whew, receive my righteousness. It's a gift. You start to get the picture? It takes away all the works mentality. It takes all away everything that says we have to work for it. We have to strive. We have, we, 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 you know, God expects more from me. No. All we need to do is to be, learn how to be world-class receivers. I'm not talking about a football game here. You could be a slim receiver. You could be a wide receiver. It doesn't matter in Christ. You just need to be a receiver. He wants you to learn how to receive. Because as you learn how to receive, and then you accept it and it's part of you, then you can give it back. That's why we never exit worship. We've made it a lifestyle. Because we continually learn to receive, receive, receive. Amen? Amen? I put a note over here on this page. So if you keep giving without receiving, you're going to get smoked. I just put that in there. Especially when it comes to you women. Because you don't know how to turn it off. You just keep on giving. You're sick. You should be in bed. And you're still giving. That, I, my mom, I grew up with six of us in the house. You know, every, one by one, they'd be puking everywhere. The whole family, the, 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 it went through the house, right? Mom, she starts puking. She's still cleaning up the other kids' puke. That's just what moms do. I mean, it's a kind of a graphic picture, but that's what moms do. They have a heart to give. We're always giving thanks. It's not a command. It's a blessing. We're always giving thanks because we know God takes the initiative. God loves to give. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no shadow... Or variation. He's always the same. He's always good. It doesn't change. No matter how you feel. That's his heart. Is to give. He's kind. He's wonderful. He's loving. He's patient. He's easy to be with. Unlike some husbands. I'm just telling it like it is. He has a way of seeing things and thinking that's just incredible. He's never negative because it's not in his nature to be. Yes, Pastor Steve. 
So what he does is give. He gives us the anointing to convert that negative to a positive. That's what he does. God is not evil. God does not cause sickness or cancer. Satan does. John 10.10. 10. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I came that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. That's the nature and the heart of our Father. I've said it before. He doesn't see problems. He only sees possibility. With God, all things are possible. He gives us the ability to convert a problem into a provision. That's what a good father does. God tells me continually, and has told me, and continues to tell me, when I get a negative thought, stop, start over, get another thought. Get another thought. It's not his nature to be negative. It's man's old nature to be negative. That's what having the mind of Christ is all about. You can put up that I drew this, when I was reading this scripture, I had this picture, and I called it the circle of life. I had Nate, the artistic man that he is, put it up for me. My picture was just a drawing, you know, scribbling. So, <clears throat> when we get the revelation that the kingdom of God is on the inside of us, everything starts to change. It all starts to change. And for that, I want you to turn to Romans 11, or you can just look behind you on the screen. So, we're about knowing that the old man is dead. We're building the new man. We're a new creation. So, this scripture in Romans eleven thirty five, 35, who has ever given to God that God should repay them? I'm going to tell you, no one. No one. John the Baptist in John 3, 37 said, no man can receive anything unless it's from his Father who is in heaven. Yeah? So let's take a look now at verse 36. For from him, starts with the Father, follow the circle around, and through him, Jesus, and to him, that's you and I, for him, that's you and I, and back to the Father by the Holy Spirit. So from him and through him and for him, to him, be the glory forever. I call it our life circle. Look at it, study it. If you don't get it, take a picture of it off the screen. Study it this week. We need to see this, that it all starts with the Father at the top. He loved us so much that he gave his son. He sent his son. So it's through him. And then it's to him. The to him is us. Yes? And for him, I meant to say. And for him is us. And then back to him to be the glory forever through the Holy Spirit in us we give back. But first we've leaned, learned to receive on this big circle. Am I articulating this clear? Is it good or not good? I, just, I saw this picture of a circle and I said, man, this is, my, this is our life circle. This is how it is. We just need to get this in our spirits. We can't give until we first learn to receive. It's just so powerful. When this settles into your spirit, it takes the pressure off, Marie. Stop putting out for your kids. You just have to receive. And I'm not picking on Marie, but she shares with me openly because she's standing in the gap for her family, yes, as a good mom should. And we all have to learn that. We've all been there. Life in the spirit is designed when you know you have to receive first. So tomorrow when you wake up, you wake up and you put your foot on the floor and say, Father, what do you want me to receive today? It just kind of changes our perspective on things. You follow me? It changes. That's the part of never exiting worship. We're continually receiving. 
We're continually being filled before we're poured out. Hebrews 7.25 says this, Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. It's like Penelope, a couple weeks ago, was on an Easter egg hunt in her own yard. You're getting closer. You're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. Ah, you found it. You learn to receive. And once you have it, it's yours. Once you make it your own, it's like stealing you. But you first have to find it. You first have to receive it. Amen? Keep asking. John 17, 21 and 23, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. That pretty much summarizes that, doesn't it? What we have to give is so much, but it's all relative to how much you learn to receive. God has so much to give from him, through him, to him. What do you have need of right now? What's in your life that you want more of? Do you see yourself positioned in the proper place of that circle that you're learning to receive it? as you start to go around that circle of life. Because you can just keep going in that circle until you become dizzy. Or you can grab hold of the truth of what it means. Religion tells you you have to give God something first. Hmm. How's that working out? For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave first. See, the new covenant Every commandment is wrapped in a promise. Wrapped in a promise of receiving. Whatever God wants from you, he intends to give you first. You see, there's a peace in that. He first makes, takes more than your own. It's his initiative that starts the process. That's how he's glorified through you. So this week, I want to encourage you to get ready to receive, practice receiving. Learn how to be world-class receivers, Tim. Expect favor when you walk into your workplace. What are you believing God for? What increase do you see coming to your life if you're self-employed for that next job? You should have an expectancy when you wake up that God has to, wants to bless you today. He so wants to bless you. That's our hope, our expectation, our confidence that we're going to receive. I pray this week that we really see the heart of Father in the place of receiving. And this is what I'm going to close with. Great moms know the heart of Father. That's how they receive. They've all been given <clears throat> life at birth naturally. <clears throat> but they realize first they were given life to carry in the first place. <clears throat> That's why you ever notice I have so much when a mom is carrying a baby, how she just glows. She glows because she's carrying that precious life of gift of life. Even if you're not a mom expecting, you carry within you a seed, a seed of promise, a seed of hope, a seed of expectation. Amen. I'm going to stop there.